Yeah. There's a new push at the State House to help people in Massachusetts narrow the gap between poverty and self-sufficiency. The goal is to help workers meet the needs of the market for higher skills and to tell us about the Workers' Pathway to Self-Sufficiency Act is our guest from the Crittenden Women's Union. We'd like to welcome the Vice President for Public Policy, Ruthie Lieberman. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Ruthie. Thanks for having me. First of all, uh, to be self-sufficient uh, in, in this economy, in this part of the country, mm -hmm. what are we talking about? Well, what we're talking about is that someone actually needs to earn, um, in the Boston area, for example, a typical family would need to earn about $58,000 a year just to pay all the basic living expenses like rent, transportation, child care, food. There would be no frills involved with that. Um, as we know, $58,000 jobs are hard to come by, so we are a high-cost state, and, and it is a challenge. To, to, a, to a great degree, what... Um the uh, Self-Sufficiency Act does, it, it's, it's, a, it's, I guess, a correction on welfare reform. And I imagine a lot of recipients of people who have high school education are less. Uh, so what would this act do for them? Well, this, um, the Workers' Pathway to Self-Sufficiency does three specific things. First of all, it puts money into the Education Rewards Grant Program, which provides grants of up to $3,000 for people who are pursuing education or training in high-demand careers. Secondly, it creates a pilot project that would promote the success of adult workers who are returning back to school to increase and upgrade their skills. And third, it would allow people who are uh, reliant on public assistance to spend up to two years in education versus the 12 months that they're allowed to spend right now. And, and of course, you would not count this education assistance as something that would be on top of other kinds of assistance people are getting. Well, actually, it would be on top of anything else there um, they would be eligible for already. It's called um, a grant of last uh, uh, assistance, um, basically. But the fact of the matter is, for the lowest 20% of earners in our economy, in order to go to community college, which most people think community college is practically free, they need to spend more than two-thirds of their income just to pay for the tuition and the fees. So the community colleges are quite prohibitive, especially for low-wage, low-skill workers. Now, some other people might be looking at this. This is great for the workers, but uh, why should the state invest in them? Does this do any good for anybody else? Well, this is actually one of the best economic development initiatives that our state can invest in right now. And um, even at the national level, President Obama agrees um, because the fastest growing sector of jobs in the United States and in Massachusetts is what we call mid-skill jobs that require more than a high school diploma but less than four years of college. And even today in this recession, there are unfilled jobs in the mid-skill areas that won't require a four-year education. Tell, tell me a little bit about what these jobs are exactly. Um, there are jobs, for example, in biomanufacturing technology. There are some jobs in, there are many jobs in healthcare, like respiratory therapist, um, RN, um, you know, many different uh, vocations in the healthcare profession that would be considered mid-skill jobs. There are construction jobs. I know that those are uh, really tight right now, but the economy will turn around, and we know that there'll be a growth in those jobs. What do we know so far about uh, comparable programs that, that have tried to help people move in this direction? Do we know how well they work? Well, actually, um, some of the uh, things that we're advocating for in the Workers' Pathways Bill are based on the successes of other states. For example, Washington State has a similar grant program for low-skilled workers to help them train for high-demand jobs. And um, those who benefited from the program have had a much higher completion and graduation from community college progr programs and are entering good-paying jobs. What is it that uh, helps people with the community college? Is, is it always about money? Is it about being able to have the time to work that into this? Because these are people who have other responsibilities. Exactly. Too. It's actually all of the above. And if, you, you know, if you're a working adult um, and you're low-skilled, you might actually be working two jobs and raising kids. And you know the reality of going to school on top of that is extremely challenging. One of the unique features of the grant, the educational rewards, is that it's available to adult workers who are going to classes one or two classes at a time, which is the typical story for an adult worker who's trying to upgrade their skills. Um, so in addition to needing the financial aid, because um, community college can be prohibitive, to um, need it, you know, the time challenges of working, raising a family. And if you're going to school, you might actually have to cut back on the hours that you work. And so you need to supplant your income 
So there were a lot of challenges, not to mention the, the fact that um, a lot of low-skill workers are the first people in their family to ever go to college. They don't know how to navigate the system. They have challenges like finding childcare in the evening for their children, or even transportation to get to school. Because we're also learning about what happens if you're a low-skilled worker. The housekeeper is at Hyatt. Um, if you're expendable, uh, you could be in big trouble. That's right. With, without a degree, it's very it's easy to be expendable. Um, and we want people to get the education and the skills that will allow them to be more flexible in this ever-changing economy. Talk about uh, where the money's going to come from this, because the, the money's tight for yes. everything, a lot of other things that we need as well here. It is really tight, but we believe that this is just the right investment for this uh, state to be doing right now. We know that we are, you know, the jobs will be tight for a while, but it does take a couple years to train for these um, professions. And we know prior to the recession that we had a, a huge mismatch between available jobs and skilled workers to fill those jobs. If we want Massachusetts' economy to grow and strengthen, we need to make sure we have those trained workers to fill those positions. For example, um, Shire Pharmaceuticals, they're talking about a growth of 600 new workers. Some of those jobs will be those mid-skilled jobs that would require less than a four-year degree. Um, and those jobs are going to need, need to be filled in the next year or two. If Massachusetts doesn't have the workers to fill those jobs, companies like Shire Pharmaceutical will move out of state to to the places where that we have the skilled workers. So we think it's absolutely critical to the economic strength um, and growth of Massachusetts to invest right now. Now, you mentioned how the idea around the South Sufficiency Act blends very well with the president's ideas about the workforce, but uh, what about the potential for coupling state money with, with other sources of money? Well, it, it's definitely a strategy that we're pursuing, and we know right now that um, the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. has voted um, a bill around student aid that would address the needs of this exact working adult population. And so we've been advocating uh, with our uh, delegation in Washington to support those efforts, and we're hoping they'll pass and that there'll be some additional resources to fund these programs here in Massachusetts. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us from the Crittenden Women's Union. Uh, that was uh, Ruthie Lieberman. Thank you very much. Up ahead, the report from Dorchester with Ed Forey after this message. Oh, Ed Forey. Uh, yeah, I hesitated too much there, so I'm going to do that one more time. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much for being with us from the Crittenden Women's Union, Ruthie Lieberman. Up ahead, the report from Dorchester with Ed Forey after this message.